Hello and welcome to Capital Inc. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. My name's Chris Kimball. Joining me in the Newcast studios in Braddon this week, Kristen Henry from Mix 106 Breakfast. Hello. John Griffiths from City News. G'day. Ginger Gorman, social affairs commentator and Emma McDonald, senior reporter at the Canberra Times. Thanks for being here, guys. Well, cyclists, V cars, Mark, whatever you like, it's been a, a perennial battleground in Canberra. The ACT government has introduced mandatory minimum passing distances to, uh, with cyclists and are now proposing new helmet laws. The aim will be uh, the no helmet laws to encourage more people to get on their bikes, particularly in urban areas, but will it lead to greater uh, rates of head injuries and accidents? John Griffiths, what do you think about this one? You, you, you know, passionate cyclist in one form or another, not quite of the Lycra brigade. But no, I don't, uh, no, I don't own any Lycra. Uh, <laughs> I own a bit of wool though. Um, look, and I hasten to add, I do own a car which is registered, so I've paid my road show guys. In terms of cycling, uh, the big change was actually allowing uh, cycles to go across pedestrian crossings as long as they've slowed down to 10 kilometres mm -hmm. an hour. That's changed the way my life works. The passing distance, as a cyclist, I've always viewed it my job to get out of the way of cars, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, arguing over right of way doesn't do you any good when you're in hospital. Uh, so I don't really see a difference. If it makes drivers think a little more, that'd be great. If people are getting booked because there's no room to get around a, a rider, I'm not, not so keen on that. But we haven't heard about that happening yet. Uh, in terms of the helmet laws, again, it's a mixed thing. The um, riding without a helmet on is wonderful. Uh, similarly, riding a motorcycle without a helmet on is fantastic, but I wouldn't do that either. So, and if I leave the house these days, I wear a hat, so I put a helmet on as much for the sun brim as I do for the safety. Mm. I think our helmet laws are deterring people like me from getting on their bikes. And I think the idea that you can have areas where it's relatively safe, where you're not on the open road, mm. where you don't have to wear a helmet, I think that will make the bike a more applicable mode of transport. There is a lot of research that says if you're going to have a serious crash and uh, knock your head on the road, a helmet's neither here nor there. It's really more sort of superficial um, injuries. Having said that, if I was going over Commonwealth Avenue Bridge mm. or down Highmash Drive, would I wear a helmet on my head? Yes, I would, but I'd probably be a much more serious mm -hmm. cyclist wearing the full Lycra garb, and that's a different uh, argument altogether. Yeah. Would I make my children wear helmets on their bikes? Yes, I would. Do I want to wear a helmet? I want to have the choice not to if I feel that it's just a mm -hmm. quick trip to the shops yep. or wherever and I may as well walk and do we need to make people wear helmets when they drive their cars or walk on the road? No, we don't. Therefore, let's have mm -hmm. a choice on bikes where it's safe. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like we are in the midst of an obesity epidemic and I absolutely think that we need to press refresh on how we how we get from A to B. Um, I, th I feel like it's really important to put it into context that um, not wearing your helmet, it's, it's not like you'll be able to ride down Northbourne without a helmet on. They will be low speed areas. Um, mm -hmm going to and from you know different campuses at uni maybe riding around lbg this also might mean if we take our foot off the pedal of helmet laws that we're able to bring in a ride share facility in canberra mm. like in new york god it was fantastic to be able to go to new york and pay your little money and get on your little bike and yeah. run around and and yes the absolutely the the road rules are completely different um at one stage i was about to go across you know, the street and you just saw these cars stopping for you. And I'm thinking, oh my God, what's happening? Mm. And you've got to stay out of the road of cyclists. It's cyclists yeah. have right of way, hands down in absolutely every scenario. So I think that there's a lot of positives to it. I personally think it's a fantastic idea. It's interesting the way that Canberra's going completely opposite the way of New South Wales, which is mm. making cyclists have registration on them at all times, you know, doubling the fines. Red um, lights, yeah. yeah. So it's a different, I mean. And they're going to see, I reckon they're going to see their riding rates drop. drop. Mm. We've all done stories with people who have had you know, horrible injuries. And mm. I think sort of inevitably you're going to have that horrible story where someone says, you know, my wife, husband, son, brother, mm -hmm. you know, was, was And there's no arguing with that. You know, you know what I mean? Like, there's no but arguing. But I mean, where do you draw the line I, if that's the I, case? You know, well, you? I, I think we need to, yeah. 
would a, would a helmet in a, in a horrendous accident, would a helmet mm -hmm. um, save someone's life? There's also the argument that helmets increase um, kind of disrespect for safety on the road because you think they're, they've got a helmet, you think I've got a helmet, um, you know, when you don't have a helmet you're a little bit more conscious. Those are the, you know, the stats sort of show that people with a helmet there's there's a, an assumption that they can withstand some sort of a, a crash, um, you know, head injuries really we're, we're fooling ourselves if we think that wearing a helmet is going to somehow prevent you from a catastrophic brain injury mm. if you come off a bike at you know 60 clicks um, you know when a, when an action bus doesn't see you and rolls mm. over the top of you. And so I would also love to see the stats on how many people we would you know potentially and tragically lose per year in Canberra due to head injuries but then how many people we're losing due to obesity. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. If we can press refresh on that. I know, that's you know. true. We are such a car centric mm. city and you know, it's, cyclists it's are, are either loathed or loved. Mm. Why can't we just accept that it's a really worthwhile activity, mm -hmm. that it benefits all of us to have more people off the roads and on their bikes and just to be a little bit more patient. But is transport and policy really the place to deal with obesity when we should be, in my view, perhaps looking at the food industry? But that's a whole it's not one of the other. It's not one of the other. But can I say some, something controversial, which is I think we should be taking money out of roads, and if we want people to cycle, we should be putting you know, cycle paths everywhere. Mm. It's actually quite hard in some areas of Canberra to cycle. To cross, yeah. 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 All the paths we, to nowhere. Perhaps we're going to have less head injuries if we get cyclists off the roads and we have mm. specific highways, essentially cycling highways for them. Why, Why are cyclists so hated? I don't hate so cyclists. Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Good legs. <laughs> Some of the angriest talk back I ever took at my 10 years at the ABC was about cycling in mm. Canberra. And just to your question about why people hate cyclists so much, I do not hate cyclists, but I find it very frightening if you are at an intersection or a zebra crossing and a cyclist zooms across out of the trees going very, very fast. I've almost hit cyclists like that. I think that's quite disrespectful and dangerous. Or if they are riding two abreast or three abreast even on an early morning on the street I used to live in, that used to happen all the time early in the morning, it's frightening. Mm. So I think the respect needs to go both ways. It's not just motorists getting angry at cyclists. I think everybody needs to be aware of the space. Well, it's certainly one that uh, I think 10 years ago, if we had this discussion, we'd be still having the same sort mm -hmm. of conversations about cars versus uh, cyclists in Canberra. Uh, please tell us what you think about it. Are the, good, are the law changes the right thing? Are we going in the right direction? Is there any way to end the great divide on our roads at the moment? Tell us what you think.